Well, hello everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute. I hope you guys are having a good day today. Uh, I'm filming this kind of out in the morning time out here in the prayer garden. Might be a little bit dark, but uh, but anyhow, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Let me get old, uh, my contraption going. I, I, I've been calling this thing my cameraman here lately. I gave him a name yesterday. Call him Steve. And so I was telling everybody, I said, I got to wait on Steve. Uh, uh, half the staff thought I'd lost my mind yesterday. Perhaps I have. But anyway, me and old Steve sitting out here in the prayer garden. But uh, but anyway, uh, I want to talk to you this morning a, a couple of things. Number one, governor didn't really say anything yesterday that uh, matters to much as far as uh, how it affects churches uh, that I can tell just looking at uh, reading through some of the reports. And so all that's kind of stayed status quo. And, uh, being able to be in that small a number uh, really won't work for us here much anyway. And besides that, we... The numbers are still going up there in Dallas, so uh, which is pretty close to us. So we'll just we'll kind of watch and see a little bit. I'm still holding out hope uh, for maybe the 31st, but now my mind's kind of shifting a little bit more towards uh, uh, maybe Father's Day. But we'll see. Don't worry. But this ain't nothing official. I'm just kind of rambling about this morning. Uh, we'll just kind of see what happens as it kind of goes forward. I want to talk to you this morning though about something been rolling in my head pretty good. For the last couple of days, one of them is uh, I, was, I was talking about dealing in um, in reality a little bit yesterday, and uh, and I was thinking about doing that uh, with for you guys today, kind of in a victory minute. And when I did, I got to thinking about a, a couple of verses of scripture that really help keep us grounded in reality. In fact, it's uh, it's almost a little uh, uh, how would you put it? These verses. Well, these verses were, uh, the Apostle Paul lived one of the greatest li Christian lives ever lived. And the Apostle Paul made a statement in Philippians where he said, this one thing I do. And, uh, and it, was, it was the thing that he did in life. It was kind of a pattern for his life. It was things that he did. To, uh, in fact, he said it was one thing that he did that, that helped him move in and under the call of God and in, uh, under Christ and in Christ. Uh, and it's it's really a uh, little snapshot. It's something that really that you can see real easily. Uh, and and he said it's it's one thing. It has three parts. There in Philippians three. In fact, there in verse twelve, he said, "I want to to just kind of sum it up." He said, "I want to lay hold of why Jesus laid hold of me." In other words, I wanted to discover the full reality of why. Jesus called me and put me in time and space in this particular time and, and all of those kinds of grand considerations. Why now? Why us? Why me? Why you? What does God want for us? How has he shaped us? Paul said, I want, I want to find a, a, a place and a way to live in the reality of the very reason why Christ called me. And so then he said, he said, this one thing I do. And he's immediately going to tell you it has three parts. Now, it's not three different things. It's something that's happening simultaneously, okay? He said, I'm going to forget what's in the past. I'm going to reach forward to what's ahead, and I'm going to press on towards the mark, or, you know, you're, you're like you run a race to the finish line, to the mark of the prize. What's the prize? The reward of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm going to do those things. Uh, I'm going to do those those three things, uh, or I'm going to do those three parts. And I have to. I always have to remind myself. He said, "This one thing I do." So it's all happening at the same time. And if you're a member of Victory here, you remember a couple of years ago or three, I spent quite a bit of time on on these verses, just us really looking at that discovery for life. I, I have found. Um, that one of the greatest hindrances to life is living in regret or living in uh, a fantasy land of, well, what would have happened if or what could have happened if. If you've ever had a doubt about, let's say, a business decision, when you go, boy, if I'd have turned this other way, you know what? Everything would have been perfect. Everything would have been great. I'd be rich by now. 
Uh, I'll hear people talk about relationships. Oh, if I'd have picked this guy instead of this, and, and boy, it would have all been perfect. Well, no, ma'am. You know, the reality is uh, you, if you, if you're picking one man for another. You're just picking one set of problems over another, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of how we are. And so it, 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 keep, it keeps us from living. When we live in the past, we live in, in something that's not a reality. Um, and he said, you know, forgetting those things which are behind. And for those of y'all around Victory, you've heard me talk about this. But, uh, but for the rest of you guys out there, you hear what I'm about to say. There's three things you have got to let go of as it deals with your past. One is your past failures. Okay? You can't you can't live then. You've learned out of your failures. They're part of your experience now. But uh, and, and I hope you took take good lessons from them. Okay, not everything works out real well. All right. Uh, you know, I got a scar on my arm that reminds me not to stack big red bottles on top of each other. And uh, now I did that when I was a kid, but uh, but that was a bad experience. And I got the scar to remind me. I'm tell you something, old brother Todd ain't stacked big red bottles on top of each other uh, since he's about three or four years old. And so you learn from it. Uh, you 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 it'll you it'll, it'll just it'll just consume you. It'll destroy you. Living in the what ifs especially as it regards failure. Um, you'll go to thinking that you're not worth anything. You'll go to thinking you can't accomplish anything. I mean, I mean, guys, read your Bible. I mean, I mean, look at David. David, I mean, David, David royally messed up a couple of times. I mean, look at Peter. He betrayed Christ. I mean, even Paul went back under a vow. I mean, so there's there's all there's all kinds of steps we take in life for everything. We didn't do it right. We did it sinfully or willfully, or or we just made the wrong choice, or something didn't work out the way we wanted. But but you can't go back and live in those past failures. Secondly, you cannot live in your in your past successes. This is one of the things that destroys lives that could have been extraordinary. You have a shining moment and you coast in it and you ride in it and you take a victory lap. Um, me and Stephen Bobovic were talking the other day, we were talking about this, uh, uh, this special they put out about Michael Jordan, you know, his 10 part special. I, I hadn't got to see any of it. Tell you the truth, TV kind of just bogs me down a little bit. But he was he was telling me about it, and I'll probably pick it up and watch it. That's that's kind of how I do movies and stuff. I, until somebody tells me it's good, I ain't gonna take a chance on watching a bad one. But anyway, uh, he was talking about that the relentless drive, you know, that that Jordan had. You know, one championship didn't mean anything to Jordan, and so those Bulls, you know, those Chicago Bulls, they just kept repeating. How many times those of us that are sports fans seen a, a team win the Super Bowl one year, don't make the playoffs the next year? Well, what happened? Well, they all got to partying. They all got to just living in the moment. They thought, you know what? Uh, this is going to take care of itself. Man, we're the best thing that's ever happened. And guess what? There's, there's somebody else out there hunting you, and you go to coasting, and, you, and all of a sudden they catch you up with you, see? Because you got to living in past successes. Church people do this bad. I've seen, you know, if you've ever seen a, a church that's relatively pretty good size, but man, when you walk in there, it just it just feels dry. It uh, it just something feels like it's just not right. It feels like something's sleeping, uh, or God help dead. And you know, I never call church dead. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna tell Jesus his church is dead. It ain't my place. But you know, just sometimes it if it ain't, it sure feels it sometimes kind of deal. Well, how did how they get to that size? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. There was a time when they weren't that way. There was a time when there was things that were happening, and they've just been living on those past blessings, but. It's just, it can just get stale. And and what that comes from is living in the past. I have heard, I've tried to never do it as a preacher. Uh, but I, when I was a young preacher, I heard guys talking all the time about what we used to do. And I I've got, I was blessed to preach around quite a few churches uh, uh, a couple of different times in my ministry. And uh, man, you don't know the success stories I've heard that were 10 years old, 15 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old. And what's happening is, is you've got a time where people are living in their past success. Uh, uh, <laughs> this COVID-19 thing kind of knocked me out of the gym a little bit, but uh, not that I was picking up anything heavy then anyhow. But uh, one of the biggest mistakes that, that men will make, like when they're working out, if you're like setting up a program and you ask them, okay, what's your max? You know, if they're wanting to get stronger, let's say. so. You know, your four big lifts, you know, your your squat, your deadlift, your bench press, and your overhead press. So, you know, you ask them, okay, well, what's your what's your max on your overhead press? Oh, I used to do, I, I used to do 225. Well, that don't mean anything. 
What, what can you do now? Okay, 225 ain't good. We can't set a program based on what you could do when you was 25 years old. We got to deal with you, right? You, you hadn't been working out for 20 years. So you see what I'm saying? So you can't live in a past success, okay? Um, and you can't raise a family in, in your past success. You can't, you can't live off what you used to do with your kids, okay? What you did with the kids when they were little. And then you, I've seen people talk about, oh, we did this and that with the kids, and they got teenage kids. They're looking at me, got their eyes bugged, like, man, I ain't going to call daddy out, but I don't remember none of that. Well, what happens is you did all that stuff before they even got memories of it. So, so you've got to keep living in the present. I'll give you a third thing. All I'm going to talk about is this one thing today. I can already tell I'm, I'm going too long. And uh, I'm about to pick up my glasses, look at the clock. But you know me, I don't really care anyhow. So, the, but the third thing is, is that you, is that you not only forget the past failures and the, and the past successes, but you've got to let go of, of things that aren't realities. You've got to let go of things. Let's use the term pipe dream. It's just empty. You've got to let go of things that are desires of your heart that have no place in the reality of your life now. You know, ain't nothing I'd like more right now than to take a snap as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> but Prescott's got no worries from me taking his spot, right? It's not a reality, okay? Every now and then I think, you know, you know what I'll do? I'll go join the army. I, I'd like to join the army. I'd like to be a part. I take. I go over there. And I need to do my part over there in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, those kind of places. I told my nephew uh, Logan when he he was he was going over there. I said, Bubba, you got you got to stand in my place. I'm gonna be praying for you. But the reality is, uh, Uncle Todd couldn't take the heat right now. You know, I die getting off the plane. What am I talking about? I'm talking about it's not a reality in my life anymore. One of the most empty things I can do is sit around and desire about things that I could have done or I had dreams about 20, 30 years ago. But what I've got to do is live as a 52-year-old man. And I've got to live in where I'm at right now. So even like in our church, I'm, I'm not sitting far from the church building right now. And my reason I'm pointing over there. But, but I, can't, I can't say, well, you know, these things could have happened in the first three or four years. Well, the truth is we're 16 years old now. I've got to deal with the church from where it is, from our successes, our failures, the things that we've learned. And, and we've got to move from where we are. You've got to let go of what's behind. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up my glasses. By the way, still got the old glasses that I found the other day. Oh, yeah, it's too late. If I end up releasing this and... I'll, uh, what, I'll, what I'll do, guys, is I'll try to pick up this week the rest of those verses. But go read them. Go read them there in, in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12, 13, 14. Just kind of read them. Be getting on them in your mind. We'll talk about it more uh, this week. But, but brothers and sisters, let me, just, let me just encourage you. Let those things go. And I'm, I'm going to say this. And you've got to stay in a continual state of it. Remember, Paul didn't say, here's the three things I do. Number one, first, I forget what's in my past, or I forget successes, or, okay, forgetting what's behind me. And then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. He doesn't say that. He said, this one thing I do. This act of forgetting is a continual thing, because you can make a decision today. You know what? I'm not going to live and let my regrets hold me back in my life today. And I got news for you. Tomorrow morning when you get up, old devil's group will be whispering one of them in your ear. It is a, it is a perpetual act. I'm going to talk to you in the rest of this week, um, Lord willing, tomorrow, if the Lord wills. I'll, I'll talk to you about one of the best things that will help you be actively forgetting the past, okay? Sorry this kind of went on to turn this thing into a sermon, but, but the, 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 those are three verses that, that have always excited me. And I'm going to tell you what, it's one of the things that's really helped me go in life and go in ministry is that you've, you've got to establish yourself on, I am not going to live in a fantasy world. I am going to live in reality. Okay, fantasies always look good and dreams, you always think they're going to end well, but dreams can turn into nightmares. So, so you got to live in where things are. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, I would, we'll jump into the middle of this week. This will be the first one I've tried to get back on. And if those of y'all that know me know that usually old brother Todd's got the worst case of ADD of a grown, that a grown up can have. So I'll tend to want to, okay, yeah, I talked about that then. I'll be thinking about something else tomorrow, but I'll try to, I'm going to try to get you through these best I can. Another thing I need to tell you, if you can, 
They've been telling me to do this for a while, and I keep forgetting it. But a lot of you guys are getting this that really you don't live around Victory Church or you found this thing on Facebook or something like this. What they tell me is if you, we do this deal that they call a blast, okay? And, and so they send it out, and sometimes it just goes out randomly to people. And so if you've gotten these, these Victory Minutes and you like getting them, the only way that... I know that I can, I can, I, that they keep, they'll keep showing up to to your your page or whatever, is that if you like, you hit the like button, whatever that is, or you share it, and I'm assuming that it means you share it with somebody, or uh, in fact, that, yeah, that's what they told me that means. Okay, in fact, if you if you like them, share them. They say if you share them with somebody, that 50 percent of the people you share them with will watch one of these videos all the way through. And and I and we hope that they're helping people. We're getting reports from just all over that that some people are trying to find some, getting some good help in life. The word of God will help you. And um, uh, but you can like us, and they say if you like it, then then every one of those when we when we put them out and they go out on a blast, right? Whatever that is, uh, then you'll get you'll get the victory minute. Okay, so. They told me to start kind of saying that, so I'll try to remind myself of it. I almost feel like I'm marketing something. Look like one of these idiots. Hey, like us on Facebook. You know, just a bunch of, bunch of kids. But anyway, like us on Facebook. Hey, we'll catch y'all later. Love you. Bye-bye.